We've asked uh, Donald Kersey's Elections Division Director and Deputy Legal Counsel with the West Virginia Secretary of State's Office to join us now. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Tom. I'm well, thanks. I appreciate you coming on. So 130,000 postcards have been mailed out so far to uh, registered voters whose addresses have been flagged as outdated. So give me an idea as to why some of these have been flagged and, and why they consider them outdated. Sure. Uh, so West Virginia is part of a 20-state group uh, plus the Washington, D.C., called the Electronic Registration Information Center. And that group matches uh, voter registration data from those 20 states and D.C., as well as uh, DMV data. And they match it on this secure server, and they send it back to the state when it looks like a voter has either moved out of state without updating the registration or moved within their state without notifying their previous county clerk that they moved. So if you go from Huntington to Morgantown and you don't tell your old county clerk in Huntington that you moved and then you register to vote in Morgantown, you could have two active voter registrations. So these postcards are going out to folks who have left, for example, Huntington and moved to Morgantown without telling Huntington they moved. Uh, And it's just to update the registration and let the Huntington clerk know hey, I've moved, you can go ahead and merge my old record so I don't have any opportunity uh, to vote. And so your voter rolls, to vote in Huntington, excuse me, and so your voter roll percentages are much better. That makes sense uh, that, that you would do that, and you can easily see how that would happen. But what what happens when people don't update this information? The, there's a lot of uh, bad possibilities, right? Uh, I wouldn't call them bad possibilities because these postcards are only going to people um, who have been identified as having moved. And the only way to identify those folks is that they either went to the DMV in a new county or a new state and put in a new residential address, or they registered to vote in another county or another state. Um, So the addresses that we have on file on the voter registration are only... Uh, is as recent as the voter let them be. So if the voter left and didn't update it, um, then, then it won't be their most recent residential address, which is it is required for your eligibility to vote, depending on where you live. Well, what I'm saying, though, is if uh, if somebody's registered in both uh, uh, Montgomery County and in Cabell County, uh, they're voting in Cabell County, forgetting that they're also registered in, in Morgantown, uh, somebody else could go there and use their information and vote illegally. Um, that is a, a possibility. Uh, it would be difficult for someone to impersonate another person in person. Um, but uh, technically, yes, that, that could be something that happens. Um, when you say difficult, I mean, r- r- when when somebody goes to, to vote, they ask for a signature. I mean, mm-hmm. you know... <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, that, that doesn't sound real difficult to me. You're, you're right, um, but you'd have to do it. Uh, your county clerks, most of the time, in your precinct, you're never going to have more than 3,000 registered voters in a particular geographical area that can go to the same precinct. So the poll workers working in that precinct usually know every person there, and if they don't, they've got a good idea. Mm. So uh, it's, there's just a lot of procedural safeguards, but you're right, you're right. It could happen. I didn't realize that. So 3,000 is the maximum per precinct? Is that is that just in West Virginia? Is that nationwide? No, that's West Virginia. There, the West Virginia Code provides different uh, standards for the geographic region and how many registered voters you can have in one region to vote in a particular precinct. Um, so uh, I think in rural areas, uh, the code actually calls it less thickly settled areas. Um, you can have up to 1,500 folks. Uh, and then for uh, more urban areas, you can have 3,000. Hmm. Interesting. Didn't realize that. Uh, again, we're talking with uh, Donald Kersey. He's the uh, West Virginia Elections Director, and uh, he's with the West Virginia Secretary of State's office. So uh, someone gets a postcard. Does that, uh, and they should already have these, I guess. It, that, were, were they mailed out yesterday, or did they get them yesterday? Uh, the vendor put them in the mail over the last couple of days. And, okay. And, uh, and so uh, the very first one should be delivered today, um, if not already yesterday. Okay. 
So does that mean that their voter registration will automatically be canceled? What does that no. mean? What, is, what should they do? Yeah, to, let me be real clear for everyone listening. These postcards will not result in the immediate cancellation of any voter registrations. They're, they're nothing more than a request to just update your address. Okay. So what what will happen is if a, a, a voter gets this postcard and doesn't do anything, then the county clerk in 40 days will mark that voter's status as inactive, which is just a technical term that is a uh, it starts a time clock, and it means from the day that that postcard um, that that inactive status was made. Uh, the voter has two federal election cycles to do something. That's go to the DMV and update their address. That's get online on our website and update their voter registration. That's go to the county clerk's office and uh, fill out a new application to update their address um, or appear at any municipal, state, or federal election to vote. If you do any of those things in the next two federal election cycles after being made inactive, and your status will revert automatically back to active. Um, so you can vote as an, as an inactive status. It, it's just the time clock that starts for folks who have moved and their forwarding address doesn't exist. Um, it gives the county clerks an opportunity to cancel a registration for a voter who's left and who has, uh, has not told anybody where they've gone, but they're no longer in their former address. All right. Uh, well, you know, that's... Uh... That's just part of what the secretary of state's office is doing. And, you know, here we are just, uh, about eight months into this, uh, for the the new secretary of state, Mike Warner, uh, locally, there's been, uh, some changes as well. Uh, it was, it has been in every County Donald, uh, give us an idea of, uh, how many files have been deleted in Cabell County since, uh, uh, Secretary Warner took office on January 16th. Sure. Um, so uh, in two, three, four, it looks like in about six months, uh, as of August 7, 2017, Cabell County has canceled 7,414 outdated or otherwise um, improper voter registrations. So that's for Cabell County's roles. Um, that is somewhere around 12.5% of their registration. Um, however, on the flip side of that, uh, get this, Cabell County has registered 1,244 new live voters. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for the state, um, we've canceled over, or the county clerks have canceled over 65,000 outdated registrations, but they've registered almost 23,000 new people to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great effort. Cabell County is doing a great job, and really it's nothing the clerks um, don't want to do. It's just that they didn't have the tools before to do it. Um, so it's, it's as simple as giving the clerks the tools, and, uh, and they, they're doing their job and well. Well, that's great. And, uh, yeah, I also want to mention this because, uh, you know, Cabell County clerk uh, Karen Cole has done a great job uh, with this. Uh, and as you mentioned, all the county clerks have. Uh, it's been a welcome change uh, in working with the secretary of state's office. But, uh, I do want to mention specifically that, um, you know, Karen Cole has, has been very ill. And so want folks to continue to remember her in prayer, but, um, uh, listen, uh, Donald Kersey, uh, West Virginia elections director from the secretary of state's office. Thank you so much for coming on. Anything else folks need to know about this? Uh, yeah, we have a special election coming up October 7th, sure. and the, the, the voter registration deadline is September 18th, so we're really encouraging people to go and update their registrations online just because it's fast and easy if they've already moved. Um, you don't have to wait on the postcard. Just do it, um, and, and, and get registered to vote by September 18th. All right, just over a month away to register if you haven't done so already. October 7th is a special election. Donna, what's that website? Uh, you can go to our website. It's sos.wv.gov. Uh, then you go to our elections folder, and you, you scroll down, and it says update my voter registration online. There you go. That makes it easy. All right. Listen, man, thanks a lot. Appreciate you joining us, Donald. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Anytime.